welcome back to my channel. Today is the next in my birthday creative spur series. So today I'm actually testing out something that I have wanted to be, try for a really long time, um, but I had no clue to where, be get, where to begin, so I figured this would be a great time to do it. So this is not a sponsored video. These are all things that I got on my own and I honestly have no clue how to use them. So I actually started not with the kit, but by picking up these watercolor inks. So I bought gold, I bought ultramarine blue, I bought ocean green, which I'm hoping would be my favorite color, neutral gray, and this glitter black. And I actually don't know if this is a watercolor ink because the package didn't say, but the bottle is the same as all the others. So I don't know, we might test this one. I might wait and test that one later. But then I actually found a kit on clearance in an art store for a watercolor ink project. So I purchased the kit, which came with this project guide, a water brush, a uh, canvas, it's like a, a board canvas, um, this palette, glitter overlay, glitter silver additive, glitter additive, cadmium, nope, yeah, cadmium yellow, although it just says Mium in English, cadmium red and lake blue. So I figured now that I have the guide, I can kind of get an idea for what I'm doing. Although just kind of based on any other project or any other thing, it looks kind of like a cross between inking and watercolor. So I went ahead and pulled some other things that I thought might be useful. So the other things that I picked up to try out with this, I actually have three of these Chinese uh, calligraphy brushes, um, a small one, a medium one, and a large one. I only pulled the small and the medium one, um, mostly because, I don't know, I figure it'll be easier to control those. I also pulled this basket, which has a whole bunch of nibs in it. Um, another Chinese manuscript brush. Um, I also have a bamboo nib which I am most comfortable using. I pulled this, which is cork. It's got a cork grip on it, fountain pen or dip pen. This, which is another dip pen holder. And this actually we won't be using today um, because it's already got ink in it. It is a brush pen, um, a Japanese brush pen. The last thing I pulled, um, which you'll actually see in another, I think, um, birthday video is this glass dip pen. It was a birthday gift to me um, and I actually haven't gotten a chance to use it yet so I'm really excited to kind of give that a try. It came with its own ink which is um, I think green is what it is but this is not watercolor ink so we're gonna not use that today. We're actually just going to use the glass um, the glass pen, the dip pen, and the watercolor inks. So we will set that there and we will go ahead and get started. I'm not gonna use the project board. I wanna save that for when I'm comfortable enough to actually create something. So instead what I pulled was watercolor paper. This is just kind of like um, a pad where I like test a whole bunch of stuff in. It's not very expensive watercolor paper. It's just, you know, general art store brand watercolor paper and it's already been through the ringer. Okay, so I have no idea where to start. Let's start with the water brush because that's what it came with. So if you're not familiar with a water brush, these are plastic brushes. They can come in a variety of nib sizes. I actually almost bought a set that included flats and rounds, but I, I don't prefer to use these to create with. I mostly use them for swatching and for applying water to my watercolors before I paint. Um, so this will be good to test with. Um, you fill the case with water. And then you can, when you squeeze it, the water will come through to the brush. I'm not going to squeeze it because this is a particularly powerful water brush. Um, I was filling it up and I accidentally squeezed the size and I got water everywhere. So we'll start with this. Um, the palette we're going to use to, and we could actually, we could actually test this out without using um, a bottle. Um, but I do have some bottles. Okay, so I guess that one's going to be red. I can already tell you that I'm not a huge fan of how easily these drip out. The dripper is not really a dripper. It's more kind of like just a spout, which is fine if that's what you're expecting, but I'm clearly not. And you can see that the ink has already gotten inside the cap. All right, so this is the Lake Blue. And we'll go ahead and put in the Cadmium Yellow. 
All right, so I think we'll test these colors out, then we'll test some with the glitter, and then maybe we'll try mixing the colors before we get to the other ones that I purchased. Okay, I've just moved things around to make them a little more comfortable. I have a glass of water um, to kind of make sure the brushes are clean. Um, let's get this brush wet and let's try the red. Ooh, that's, it's not so bright on camera, but it's super bright and red. Mian, those are not for you, sweetheart. All right, let's just see how thin how thick of a line I can get. Ooh, all right. Okay, so it's showing up a little orange on camera, but it's actually this kind of, it's a solid red. I wouldn't actually call it like um, a bright red. Um, but you can kind of see what I'm doing there. All right, let's rinse this off. I'll tell you what though, the ink comes off nice and quick. And let's try this yellow. This brush actually really picks up the ink really well. And that's a super beautiful yellow. Yeah, the yellow is showing up much better on the camera than the red is. This yellow is a little brighter in person, but it's still just a solid yellow. And I love this. This is, that's so pretty. All right, let's try the blue and then maybe we'll try for some glitter. Oops, I got some blue in the yellow, so maybe we'll try for green next. No, ma'am. This blue is really pretty too. You can still see some of the yellow actually in the uh, strokes. I didn't actually get the brush fully clean, but it creates a really interesting effect. Um, that's really cool. Okay, so since we're already mixing the blue and the yellow, let's see how well these mix to make a green. It's not a bad color. It's definitely on the yellow side, but there's a lot more yellow in that pan than blue. Um, okay, put the lid on that, but just so that we can see it. But they do mix well, they definitely mix well, and it's really easy to paint with these so far. <laughs> um, it's, oh, I don't know, I'm used to thicker ink. This is kind of much more watery, I guess, than I was expecting. I definitely wanna see if it's a different experience painting with and writing with the different materials that I have, like the different pens. So we'll give that a shot. Before we do that though, I'm gonna add it to the red, but let's add some of this glitter, this silver glitter, and see, ooh. Oh my God, what we get there. Oh, it's kind of showing up on camera, but there are sparkles all throughout that red now. Um, so let's, oh, let's see, let's put it right next to the other red and compare it. Mian, this will hurt you, babe. I have a very curious cat next to me right now and she, um, she's been in some other videos where she kind of puts up a fight, <laughs> so. All right, you know, that's kind of disappointing. So if you look, I mean, if you look at the ink in this, um, the glitter is super obvious and you can even see the sheen on camera. However, when you lay it down with the glitter, it's not really showing up. And I don't know if that's because the paper's wet and I'm just missing it or what. So we'll definitely have to um, give this another go. Okay, so I actually went ahead and put out all of the all of the colors that I have with the exception of this black glitter, which we're gonna save for later. And then I went ahead and put the blues and the yellows on the page to compare. So this is the first blue that we were playing with up here the lake blue, and then the bottom blue is the ultramarine blue. You know, the, I actually really like them both, um, especially this lake blue. It's got a lot of, um, I just got ink on myself, a lot of, I don't know, variety in it, depending on what you're doing and how many layers you've got, so I like that. And then over here, we have the uh, cadmium yellow and the gold. I have to say I'm quite disappointed in the gold. Um, it doesn't look like a gold to me. It looks like a darker yellow. 
Um, so, I mean, I'm going to keep the ink and I'm going to use the ink, but it's definitely not what I thought I was purchasing. So there is that. Um, and I'm actually also going to have a swatch of all of these colors, which I'll go over at the end. Um, but I thought we could play with different, um, different implements to paint. I'm going to have to get more watercolor paper here soon. Okay, so what I went ahead and pulled out was the gloss, the traditional dip fountain pen, the bamboo, and then the two, two of the Chinese writing pens or writing brushes. So let's start with this one. It's a round um, bristly a brush. Um, and I'm going to have to dip these in water because they're not, you know. So let's, I don't know, I want to play more with this blue. So let's pull out, actually... Oh, it's all leaked over. That's why. So that's the light blue. That's the ultramarine blue. Let's take a look at the green. So this is the ocean's green that I am kind of excited for. So let's... Interesting. I actually really like this. I wish it were a little more saturated, but it is watercolor ink. So I'm not expecting too much. Um, you can actually see how it plays in the shadows. Um, the afternoon sun is starting to come through my blinds. So that's, I mean, that's not, that's a nice color. I definitely would call it an ocean green. I think they labeled it right. They definitely, um, got that part right. Um, trying to get all this ink out. So I'm finding that the water brush so far is the best, I don't know, conductor. It soaks up the water really nicely. Um, let's see what this gray does. So I'm pulling into the neutral gray. Um, this brush is picking it up decently, just fine, but definitely not um, as well as the water brush. I like this gray. This also dries. It's and I have. I mean, I haven't layered it and done any like big pieces with it yet, but. Um, it definitely dries faster than watercolors because this, this green, just this one layer of green is already dry. Um, so there's the gray. I like that gray a lot, actually. Okay, so it works well with the brushes. So I'm actually going to put this one aside. We might play with that in a minute. I want to see how it does with the different dip um, pens. So I'm going to start with the one I am most comfortable with, which is just this bamboo dip brush. Um, and I'm pulling, or a dip pen, I'm pulling into the ultramarine blue oh I much prefer the look of this over the work with the brushes and that's just because that's what I'm used to doing with ink but look at that isn't that that's nice and you can see it kind of whiting washing out here um, because I needed to have dipped it in more but that I, I love that look just that it, it creates such a, a unique look to the ink um which you don't act which in my opinion you don't really get from um fountain pens because the ink comes straight through the tip i really like dip pens because you do get that that look of oh the ink's running out i need to dip and get more ink all right let's try um let's try one of the brighter colors let's use the yellow on this traditional dip nib the metal one Works just fine. I'm still more comfortable with the bamboo pen, but that works really well. I actually really like these inks. They give a softer, definitely a softer look than a traditional ink in my opinion, um, which I think is really cool. All right, let's try the glass and let's try it in, um, ooh, let's try it in the red. Let's do the red. Yeah, and the one thing I really like about glass and this is my first time using it, is that you can see the ink get pulled up in all of those little crevices within the glass. That's really cool. And you don't really see that in the others. Oh, this is nice to write with. I actually, that, that's really nice. Yeah, so you can kind of see the difference of how it looks with the um, brush versus the dip, the pen dips. Um, so 
you can kind of get a feel for what that looks like. I really like the way it looks with the pens. Um, the brush, I need to get used to, but I really like how it looks with the pens. Mm, okay, all right, so before we get to, let's, let's go ahead and let's try out this glitter. And I'm gonna use as, I'm gonna do it with the brush pen, I guess, first. It's definitely acting like a watercolor ink. It's very liquidy. So I'm gonna presume that I'm safe, but I'm not gonna use any of my nicer brushes or pen dips, dip pens with it. I'm gonna use, um, I'm gonna use this brush. Definitely black, that's for sure. Really nice, nice tones. Got the, well, dice saturation with this. Definitely a little more saturated than the others. I can see, so I can see some glitter in person. Not very much, kind of similar with the red. Let's actually go back to that red. Okay, the glitter's showing up a little better now that it's dry, and there it is. It's shimmering ever so slightly on camera. So I guess when it dries, the glitter shows up better. Um, but, um, oh man, I really like these. I'm gonna... Okay, so here are the swatches, and I discovered a couple different things while I was doing this. One, I hate this palette. I absolutely hate hate it. The the way that it's done, and you can kind of see how it's happened over here, the way that it's done, huh, these little separator bars don't go all the way to the top. They kind of scoop. And so it's allowing the ink, if you put, I don't know, even a little bit too much into one of the wells, it just kind of spreads everywhere. So I'm not too happy with that. Um, the other thing is that I did not give myself enough room to do the swatches so you can see the blue kind of bleeding into the gray. But here they are. So the cadmium red, cadmium yellow, the gold, ocean green, lake blue, ultramarine blue, blue neutral gray, and the glitter black. Okay, so I figured while we're here, why don't we make something with it, like some art. So I traded in that ridiculous um, palette for just a regular plastic palette. I got this from the Dollar Tree. I just kind of, I had lots of different types of palettes and I figured these are nice and round and clearly separated, so they would be great for that. Um, I went ahead and put all of my um, dip pens away and I am keeping out the water brush and the Chinese calligraphy brushes um, because I want to kind of, I really want to play with these round, these round tips. Um, so the project guide tells us um, to work with creating flowers and it actually has some cool features in it that I noticed. Um, so it's got the color wheels and then it's got different techniques you can do. So putting it on dry, putting it on wet, applying salt, blowing through a straw, splattering, and using a paper towel. Um, I've done a couple of those, but I have not done a whole bunch. Um, so it suggests a floral, so I guess that's what I will try here. And I'm only gonna use the colors that I have, so I'm not gonna use any watercolor paint or other ink. So I'm thinking I wanna start with maybe a central flower, and I'm feeling like I kind of feel like I want to create a purple. So let's try mixing the red. That's a lot of red, but that's okay. Um, and come on. That's the other thing. These lids are just kind of ridiculous to screw on. Okay. Um, and let's see. I've got the two blues. I think I'm going to go with the ultramarine. Um, and then, you know, maybe I'll mix the other one with it as well and if we get like a softer lavender color maybe I could line the outer edges with the softer lavender color so I'm just gonna use this other piece that we had experimented on to do some swatching of the purple that I hope I just created that's definitely bluer than I wanted if I want it to be purple I'm gonna have to add a lot more red to that okay so let's do that let's add some more red You know, I feel like I said earlier that I thought this was going to take a while to go through, but I'm literally sitting here going through this while I mix. See, that's still really, really blue. Not exactly what I was hoping for, although I'm actually not mad about those swatches. This would be nice to add to a journaling spread. <laughs> um, but you know what? I think I like this enough. And you know what's interesting? 
you can actually start to see some purple showing up as it dries in these outer rims. That's a really interesting effect. So I um, did not like the big broad strokes that this was giving me. So I'm gonna set this aside. I don't know if I'm gonna use this one. It's really thick. Um, but so I'm gonna go in with a smaller one. And I'm not gonna dip it in nearly as far as I had the other one. So I'm actually thinking to start, ooh, this is hard. <laughs> All right, let's, I'm not used to creating flowers this way, but I figured I would try the technique that the, um, that the project I gave paint this way at all however I mean it's not it's not awful I'm leaving the center open because once this dries I think I'm gonna put that um, maybe the yellow in there or the gold or maybe the black that purple well that I thought was a blue but I have found that the more it mixes actually I mean look at that it's just so pretty um, it looks almost blue when you apply it but as it dries the purple kind of really shines um, and I'm just applying the wet ink onto this dry surface um, if you look at some of the other watercolor, the watercolor that I've done over the last few months for my bullet journal, I do kind of a mix of wet on dry and wet on wet. Um, it's actually turning out better than I thought. I tell you, I do wish that I had purchased, and I don't actually recall seeing one, but I wish that I had looked for an actual green, um, but I didn't, so we're going to have to make one. Okay, so what I want to do now, and I actually really like this color, I'm trying to remember if I have any pipettes around here, um, I picked up some, I picked up some uh, little bottles from the Dollar Tree the last time I was there, and um, I'm gonna definitely transfer this color into one of those bottles, but we'll just set that aside for now. I do, however, want to add um, a little bit more color to this to give it some alternating, like an alternate kind of thing. I want to see if I can create that lighter purple that I was mentioning earlier using the lake blue and the cadmium red. So let's see what I can do with that and I'll just get our handy swatch thing you know these swatches are actually really pretty um, see and that comes out much like a, a, a purple the different purple I kind of want it to be I don't know I'm not super happy with it but you know I said that about the other ones it's actually I mean they're they're definitely different, but they're not the kind of different that I was hoping for. So let's add a little more of this, um, you know, let's add a little more red. Let's see what we can get here. So you can see, I haven't used, I haven't used terribly much, but I'm, I feel like I'm using a lot. Alright, let's try that. Oh, that's much better. That's actually a lot better in my opinion. Um, just to add some kind of differentiation in color to this flower. In my experience, very rarely are flowers like all one color. Um, so I'm just going back in with a smaller brush and I'm going to fill in some of these gaps with this redder purple to give it just kind of a, I don't know, a less perfect feel. And that's something that I've kind of really had to come to terms with as I have experimented with these colors. 
or well with anything is that perfection is not always the best and it's not always what you need. So, um, you know, just I guess going with the flow, which I'm not very good at. Which is funny, I'm actually pretty decent at it, I think, I hope when it comes to like working with, you know, people that aren't me or people that aren't, um, I don't know. I'm good with it sometimes and bad with it other times. Okay, so I've added in some of this lighter purple, this redder purple, it's not really a lighter purple, it's a redder purple, to give this flower a little more of a unique look, a little, little less, I don't know, a less, little less monochrome, if you will. Um, and now, what am I going to do now? I guess now we need to create the green. So, um, oh, we definitely need the yellow. And I remember when we created that, well, you know what? Let's look at the ocean green. So that's the ocean green. That actually might be a nice green for this plant, just because this plant has sign of softer look to it so let's take some of that ocean green and we'll pop it into this middle well I definitely am gonna need a pipette um, and I have some for my other inks oh but I was hoping I have a clean one I will have you know what I'm smart I'll figure it out I got, I got two degrees I'm gonna figure this out so I'm actually gonna go I actually I think I might go back in with this big one and get some bigger branches. So let's dip into that. Okay. So, ooh. not bad. It's not quite what I was intending, but it's not bad. Um, let's do... found with these brushes, um, they're made of natural hair, and I do not remember what kind of hair they're made of, but um, sometimes you have to go back and reform the brush. Not very good going from this side. Okay. Okay, that's actually not bad. I'm not gonna do too much on this, um, much more on this because I'm actually pretty happy with it. And I really just kind of wanted to experiment just a little bit. I am, however, actually I'm actually gonna take out this, the glass pen. And I'm going to dip it in the green and I'm going to use it to make really thin connections with connections, really thin. Um, yeah, just to kind of give like a delicate spidery look to this, to these leaves. and give it some kind of a little bit of dimension. Yeah, I'm actually really happy with this. It's pretty simple. Um, it did not take a lot. Um, and I just did this on a postcard size watercolor paper. Um, so actually, if you turn it over, it is a postcard. Um, but there it is. 
I'm actually really happy with that. Thanks for joining me. Um, in my next video, I'm going to be working with regular inks, I think, or my next one of these creation videos. Regular inks and a variety of different fountain pens and dip pens. So um, let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see more videos like this, if you'd like to see more art creation videos, and I will definitely um, look into it. Thanks, guys. <music>